Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to Musings. My name is Elizabeth Mannequin from the Ackland Art Museum. I am joined by my colleague and co-host, Allison Portnell Lathrop, and three distinguished colleagues who we'll be introducing in a minute. Um, for those of you new to our program, Musings is actually a deck of cards that we at the Ackland uh, put together, and it is a compilation of quotes and questions and prompts from artists, philosophers, art historians, museum educators, all thinking about and prompting you to think about uh, the role of art, the role of museums in our own lives and the way in which they shape how we think about, perceive the world around us. So we've got a great crew assembled. Allison, you wanna introduce our special guests? Absolutely. So today we have colleagues from all across the museum, um, different departments. Um, joining us today is Ariel Fielding, our Director of Communications, Jenny Marvel, our Head of School and Community Programs, and Kendra Meyer, our Finance and Administration Assistant. So thank you all for being here. We're excited to have you. All right, Elizabeth, let's get to our important question for the day. We have a quote um, to think about from Ad Reinhardt and then a question to get us into conversation. So here we go. The one place for art as art is the Museum of Fine Art. A Museum of Fine Art should exclude everyone but fine art and be separate of museums of ethnology, geology, archaeology, history. Any disturbance of a true museum soundlessness, timelessness, airlessness and lifelessness is a disrespect. So do you agree or disagree and why? Ariel, would you like to start us off? Sure, well, this is a very um, provocative quote to say the least. Um, I would say that as somebody whose um, sole focus is making the museum more welcoming, um, that last sentence is a bit troubling. Um, I don't know much about Ad Reinhardt. I don't know how tongue in cheek this was. Um, I know the um, abstract expressionists in general were a pretty grumpy bunch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to go to, especially an airless or a lifeless art museum. That doesn't sound very fun to me. Um, I, um, I read this fantastic piece, a real tour de force by uh, the curator, Dr. Kelly Morgan, who's I believe at the Indianap Indianapolis Museum of Art. Um, and it's called To Bear Witness, Real Talk About White Supremacy in Art Museums Today. And, and she talks about museums as um, spaces of indoctrination. Uh, you know, that, that was part of the original intent behind museums. Um, and I know the same was true in the world of opera, which is um, something I, I know a lot about. Um, so I feel like to, to look at museums as soundless, timeless, airless, lifeless, um, yeah, that's like, that's a very particular take on the experience of going to an art museum. And I feel like, again, that's not an experience I want to have. And it doesn't sound very welcoming. So there you go. There's my take. Yeah. Thanks so much, Ariel. Yeah, Ad Reinhardt, he did actually, he had sort of a dual life. He was actually a political cartoonist mm -hmm. and also a painter and an abstract expressionist. And we have a work in our collection, it's called Yellow Painting. And it's sort of, he's moving through, it's before he gets into, he's famous for these sort of black or sort of variations on sort of black and very dark blue and, and but really sort of this, this almost empty space, but he had this dual life um, also as a, as a cartoonist. But I, um, yeah, I, I happen to agree, agree with you for reasons I won't get into, but um, what do you all think? Jenny. Um, oh, oh, Kendra. Kendra. <laughs> I was like, Jenny, you can go ahead. <laughs> no, Kendra, you're up. <laughs> um, I kind of, I definitely agree with Ariel. I'm not, I don't have as much background in knowing anything about museums or art, but um, anytime people start to like 
try to categorize things or put them in boxes in kind of that like I'm gonna make this separate from other things because it's mine now or something like that um, it can get problematic and I think like it's helpful to think about things as intersecting and definitely like um, the ethnology archaeology geology these like can go in with art all the time um, and art was a part of studying these things I would think at least or it could be um, so I don't really agree with like keeping everything separate from each other and not thinking about things in a more fluid and like intersectional way versus just like oh we have to you know I think that's problematic just like Ariel said what do you think Jenny so it's interesting that Ariel took the the latter part and same with with Kendra a little bit of the mixture of both but the first part of that quote um, bothered me so much just because it's not how I teach. It's not how I look at the world. It's not how I think about art. I don't think of it as being separate from everything else. It's about human creativity. And I, well, I know, I know that art is inherently interdisciplinary. So there's something to be said when you have objects that were created in the 20th century, even remotely near something that might be from, you know, 2000 years previous to that, which would be considered archaeological or even ethno, um, the ethnographical, ethnographical, <laughs> sorry. Um, so it's interesting to me because I think that is not how we teach um, or with K-12 groups, especially. Um, we think about cross-cultural connections and thinking more or less like about um, universal universalities um, like beauty across cultures about power across cultures so that um, fine art or the abstract expressionist pieces as Ed Reinhardt is all about um, have conversations with other objects it is very interesting because I shared this quote with my husband and he actually agreed with Ed Reinhardt with the first part I was like, what? what are you talking about? Can you can you paraphrase his rationale or? I was like, well, why would you want to have something from history next to an object, an art, an artwork? I was like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> so he, um, it, and he, it was only for like the, that first part of the quote. I, yeah. um, we didn't really, I totally agree with Ariel with, um, I wouldn't want to be in a place that is lifeless and or the airlessness of, of things so yeah i think one of the, your your example also so um jenny runs our k-12 through and community programs and teacher programs and and thinking about also the expectations that that university students and faculty bring into the museum like i imagine reinhardt is talking about painting that is doesn't represent something in the outside world. But when you think about the discipline of art history and the, the history of Western art, it is built on things that were not meant to be art, right? You look at Greek vases, which were meant to be very, very fancy containers for grain and oils. And you look at these, you know, early Italian paintings were meant as devotional works. And so this idea of utility and function is also not as clear cut. And I don't think that Reinhardt wants to include those either. So I don't think he's inconsistent there, but I do think that a lot of people's conception of fine art even mm. is, is more, um, to Kendra's point, there, there are more fluid categories in the discipline of art history, you know, in the late, you know, in, in the, really the 19th century in the US, like, is putting this lens on all of these objects that have been collected and you know taken from certain spaces and so the disciplinary lens and sort of the interdisciplinary i think in the university museum in particular you get to put all of those different questions that different schools of thought and different disciplines bring and put them you know take them all into the museum allison you want to weigh in oh yeah jenny oh i was going to say one thing that i was i was thinking about this quote and i was wondering where the quote was coming from and it was also interesting in this, he also mentioned that, in, this is a quote, one meaning in art as art, past or present is art meaning. 
when an art object is separated from its original time and place and use, it's moved into an art museum, it gets emptied and purified of all of its meaning except for one. So he was talking about specifically religious object that becomes a work of art in an art museum loses all of its religious meaning, which I thought was also really interesting because it's like, well, it does, but it doesn't. So it's like this, um, it's like when we talk about objects from um, Asia or Africa, they weren't meant to be in a museum. Then they lose that context of being with, in their permanent place and changed, so. Right, and that's a dangerous power, right? That's a really dangerous and slippery um, history of museums in the first place. Ariel, you look like you wanna say something. Yes, um, ripping off of something that Jenny just said, um, there is a movement now among some prominent curators to move religious objects, to repatriate them to their original religious contexts. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that I, I've only heard about that very recently. That's only become the sort of part of the, it's, it's only become a public conversation very, very recently, but I think it's a fascinating idea. Yeah. And there, you know, yeah, that's, and there are different, that's a whole other musing. And we actually do have several in our deck that deal with repatriation because it is a big thread of thought um, in museums. Um, Allison, do you want to weigh in or should we, should we let our studio audience? We can let our studio audience weigh in. But I think there's so much to think about here, whether it's, how, I mean, how his perspective as an artist, having art in a museum shapes things. And I think a lot about, you know, um, visitors coming to the museum or visiting our website to see our art online and everything that a visitor brings with them. Like, how can you not bring your backgrounds to um, seeing different works of art? And so those boundaries just, they, they are so much more porous and intersectional, like Kendra said. So tell us what you think um, when you visit the Ackland. Do you think about these quotes um, <laughs> from Ed Reinhardt um, and think about those perspectives? So join our conversation. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So let us know what you think and join us next Monday as well. See you next time.